What's up, everybody? I'm Scott. I'm Jason. And you are listening to a Memorial Day weekend 2019 edition of Liquid Carnage. It's Memorial Day weekend here. It is upon us. I right? know. What is the time? I know. Go? I can't believe it's almost start of the official start of summer, my friend. Official start of summer. It doesn't feel like it here in Arizona. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I, you it, guys have had some really cold weather. It has been in the 50s and, and, and high 60s this week. Normally by now, we're frying. Pools are getting warm. Uh, we're ready to start grilling. But no, right now, we're still wearing sweaters and, and just hoping the wind doesn't blow us out. I feel, for, I feel your pain, buddy. We, we've had lows in the 80s. It's awful. Ugh. Yeah, I, I bet. <laughs> I, that's, that's what, parka weather for, for you, Phoenicians? Yeah, you know, it's, it, I mean, it, it's like parkas, mittens, you know, muckalucks. I mean, it's, it's all of it. It's all of it. You know, I, I knew it was still cool down in Phoenix. I was, I was watching the Diamondback game the other day, and normally by this time of year they have the dome closed and it air conditioned. But the dome was open, the windows were open, and they're just enjoying uh, day baseball and early evening baseball. And that doesn't happen often this late in the baseball season or this early in the baseball season in the May. Normally they have it shut by mid May through uh, mid September. Yeah, it, it was. Um, it, it's been beautiful weather. I mean, it's it's actually. I mean, it's cold right now. It's like 75 and breezy. It's pretty cold. So we had some rain a yeah, little I bit. Wind, so. I hate when that wind chill takes it down to 75. I that's, know. That's it, you know, when you got a wind chill of 75, it's it's pretty bad. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> so with the big Memorial Day weekend upon us, uh, what are you doing? Are you moving into your new home? Are you are you hanging out? Are you chilling? What are you doing? Uh, we um, are not moving quite yet into the home, but we are going to be working on uh, getting the fencing put up between the pool and the dogs area so that our dogs don't drown and die. Uh, uh, I do appreciate that as a dog lover myself. Yes, as a dog lover. So we just don't want to walk into our house and see a dog floating in the pool. Yeah, Unless true. it's Ellie yeah. because then Ellie, you know, Ellie's been peeing again on the on the carpet and I've had to beat her butt a couple times. Uh, so if, it, if, if she's floating after she's peed on the carpet, then okay, we got, we have something to be happy about. So, Wow. That's wow. I know. That's I know. This, this took a dark did turn. Take a- if anyone, if any of our listeners work for PETA, <laughs> uh, the view, the explicit views of some of our hosts do not reflect all of our hosts here on liquid carnage. Did I say oh that right? man. I'm sorry, buddy. I shouldn't have said that. I take it back. I take it back. Uh, I'm sorry, dude. My, as I record, my boys are my three dogs are sitting around me, just kind of staring at me because I think they heard what you said. Mm-hmm. And I get, I'm getting that look of don't ever take them to Phoenix for the weekend. They'll stay at their grandparents' house and be. Well, fine. no, but that's why we're going to build them a fence so they'll be able to come, you know, come and stay, and then they can hang out with the with the dogs and not, you know, go into the pool. So I'm I'm doing this oh, for your yeah. dog. See, I'm a, I'm a pet lover. Just sometimes my dog I... pees on uh, the floor and I get mad. No, I agree. I hear that all the time. It's it's mine will mine are perfectly housebroken as long as I'm in the house. That, yeah. Uh, but the minute I leave, that nah, going outside is too much of a hassle to use that dog door. Oh God. So there's nothing wrong with the carpet right there down the hall. You know. So, oh, I had a, I had a, I had a, something happen to me this last weekend that I did find kind of funny. So uh, our friend um, Adam, who lives up in Las Vegas and sometimes is a listener of the Liquid Carnage. He graduated uh, with his bachelor's degree um, in kinesiology, which he's he's preparing himself for basically PA school. Um, but yeah. you know, I don't know if you've been to a graduation in a while, but at, at UNLV they highlighted four students who you know had their you know like exceptional students that they wanted to highlight as special. You know, I guess they don't do valedictorian anymore, but they do like these students go above and beyond and are, are really good. And you talk about feeling like quite a loser. Like these people were uh-huh. like, Oh, this person started uh, like he was an architecture major and he has started working with um, urban planners to develop um, urban centric art institutes for underprivileged kids. And one of the girls was going to the Brookings Institute this summer to try to solve the immigration problem. And I felt like, wow, man, <laughs> <laughs> what kind of loser am I, buddy? These millennials, man, they're not afraid to get after it. Oh, God, <laughs> no. I mean, and the one girl had, she was getting four majors. She was finishing four majors, like economics, political science, psychology, and something, urban planning or something. And she looked so like she was, honest, if she, she was like 21. With four of those I degrees, mean, 
yeah, with, with four of those degrees, she's going to end up being a teacher. <laughs> yeah, so let's be real. Yeah. <laughs> all, the, right. all that education, and she's going to be a professor somewhere. Which is yeah. nothing wrong with that. Good for her. Uh, that is three more degrees than I have, and it's three more degrees than I care to go out and get at this point. Because the last graduation I was at was my own in December of 2002. So do the math. Uh, yeah. almost 17 years ago. Yeah, you know, and, and and all I could think about was, man, how lame am I? Like, Nuri and I were just sitting there like, wow, you talk about feel like a real shithead. Like, you know, <laughs> what have you done for anybody? Um, I didn't flip someone off when they tr- cut in front of me. I did that, you know. Right. But, <laughs> but it, it just goes to I show you that I, there I, are I, people doing shit in this world that, you know, that Oh yeah, make me well, feel I, like I a jerk. I had my own moment of mor- of mortality this week. I was our, our secretary in my office is on vacation, so I was going through the mail, distributing it, and they always drop off a local newspaper for us. And it, this week is graduation week, so it's basically it's the last week of school, and they, the paper always does a nice send off for the seniors graduating high school. And when I graduated twenty years ago, uh, we only had the one high school. Now we have three, so they did a nice section for all of them. And I, it just dawned on me today that all these kids graduating this week. Uh, weren't even alive when I graduated high school. Yeah. So I, wow. I think I've, I've entered another level of adulthood. I'm like, oh, fuck. You know, I am getting old. So you, you're class of, 80, of 89? or uh, 99, yeah. Yeah. Crap, dude. Yeah, you're getting old, bro. I know, dude. You got, just might as well just take me out back put a bullet in the back of my head. It's it's getting harder and harder out there. Yeah, I, I'm the class of... Uh, t- of uh... Year class reunion next year, thirty years, man. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah. Wow. I mean, what are you gonna do with that? That's are you even gonna? Yeah, no. Uh, we we decided because it's also um, my ten year anniversary with Noreen, so we're thinking about turning it into like a ten day vacation and going up to Juneau and hanging out in Alaska for ten days. So, so basically, one day for every year you've been together. Yeah, basically one day for every day every year we've been together. That's right. That's a very nice way to yeah. take a vacation moving forward. Yeah. I mean, that's... so so I figure we'll get a double dose, you know. Good for you yeah. guys. It was it so, was funny though because it, the first time the first, my ten year anniversary going through a divorce, twenty year anniversary going through a divorce. So I hopefully I won't be doing that again on my third, you know, thirty anniversary. So hopefully, well, for what it's worth, you have to legally be married to go through yeah, divorce. So yeah, yeah, no. But um, yeah, so yeah, so I'm hoping I'm hoping the next year. I'm hoping we'll go this year, so we'll see how it goes. Yeah. So, uh, do you have a class reunion coming up? Uh, do you remember your high school or even college graduation? Hit us up on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all at Liquid Carnage. We want to hear your stories. If you want to hear about Tom's wild uh, graduation from college from Northern Arizona University, yes, that is a real school. They tell me. Uh, hit him up at liquid underscore EP on Twitter and Instagram. That's going to make a note. Yeah, that'll that definitely right make a comment on to the, that'll definitely make a comment on the uh, podcast uh, uh, notes. You know, it's, it's at least nice that this is one of those, I'm going to start dropping him in little nuggets like that to see how, how much attention he's actually paying to everything we say. Or if he does actually phase out from moment to moment, because you never know with him. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. The now that that's being said, the other thing that graduation taught me though is that there um, there are a lot of women going to college now because they said that at UNLV, fifty eight percent of the graduates were females. Well, so that that that, 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 that means mean, that there's a lot of girls getting wicked smart. So we're gonna have to step up our game, dude. We gotta start reading a little bit absolutely. more. We gotta start, you know, we gotta start getting, absolutely. you know, educated, man. You know, true story that happened to me this week. Again, one of those, man, I could hit you moments. So one of our close friends now works for me as as the manager of one of the departments I run, and that that department runs a volunteer a volunteer department that has a gift shop, and you can buy hardback books for a quarter for a dollar depending on the size and i told the ladies that run it if you find any like true stories anything like that put them aside for me because i that's what i like to read so she brought him my my uh employee brought him to me today and said i even know you like to read that's just weird <laughs> and i was like <laughs> wow i was like wow <laughs> i didn't know you like to read wow okay like that's a shot like, don't, isn't your review coming up here? Like, can't I do something about this? But it's like, come on, man. How Let do me you a friggin' bone? Yeah, how, how do you? Wow, what kind of persona do you give off at work, man? They don't think you read. I, I don't know. I, 
Apparently, I give off a persona that I, I can, I'm barely literate. Well, no, know. you know what it is. You're so good looking. You're strapping young guy. They probably think you're just a big, you know, meathead who doesn't have a brain, just all looks, you know? That's true. They probably, they probably think all the only books I like are the colors. Yeah, they know, they know that I read all the time when they look at me. <laughs> yeah, that's true. They look at both of us compare like, They put one's an intellectual, one's a meathead. Yeah, that's right. They go, one, one's the jock, rich. one's the jock, one's the uh, nerd, and they, you know, instantly know I must read. Exactly. He must be very well versed in Shakespeare. <laughs> you know, wow. though, the thing about that, it's, 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 not, it's not that it's a big passion of mine, but I like to read because I just, it keeps me informed, it keeps me up to date, and I like having that edge of, of being able to have a conversation with just about anybody about anything. So I think the more versatile you are when, when it comes to, to peopling like that, I, I think the better, better off you are in just in life. Well, you know, does it make sense? yeah, you know me. I mean, I plagiarize all the big lines from movies and TV shows. I mean, that. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, hell, that's how you bag. Exactly. Noreen. So if you thought you were so original for the longest time, so you showed her finding. Yeah, words. exactly. So, I mean, if it wasn't for someone writing those words, who knows where I'd be? I might be, you know, one of those homeless guys that I see in Las Vegas, you know, on the corner of uh, of uh, Fremont and, uh, and, you know, sixth or whatever, just sitting there like rocking back and forth with that glazed look in my eye. Well, don't be fooled. Those guys are still driving Benzos, living in high-end condos. For <laughs> true, true, true. So, well, I don't maybe, know. Maybe yeah. they're onto something we're not yet. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, you know, but uh, but it does say something that there's so many. There was a graduate class of 3,000 at UNLV this year, and the the there were so many people that are getting higher education in all kinds of different fields. So I'm hoping that those people, you know, are coming into our workforce to make us a better world, you know? You know, I, I think everyone comes out of college with the best intentions, hoping they can at least make a difference. But I hope they understand that it doesn't happen right away, that you have to actually pay your dues. You have to actually contribute. You're not going to make a million dollars right away, but you got to grind. you got to grind hard. And hopefully that pays off sooner or later, but it's persistence well, that works, you know? Well, and the reality is that many of these people that got their degrees, you know, like uh, uh, it was public health or, you know, public affairs. Uh, they were, you know, urban urban planning, which is like the new big thing for like uh, basically city governments in a like urban city. Mm-hmm. And there was hundreds of these kids. And I'm thinking, boy, they only knew that those jobs were only going to be paying like nothing when you get started. You got to like earn the you know, earn the time in, you know? Oh yeah. I mean, it, it takes, it takes a certain level of commitment. Like, like becoming a teacher, I, I can never be a teacher and I've got friends and I've got family that are teachers and it takes a whole lot of patience to make no money. Yeah. And, and you have to, you have to understand that that's a, that's a service job more than a, I'm going to make a million dollars. It's a passion. Yeah, it's definitely a passion because, I mean, you're right. The teachers – and unfortunately, we live in one of the worst states in terms of funding for public schools, you know, in Arizona. It's usually ranked, you know, one of the bottom states we in the country. We might actually be the worst. I think we're actually the worst. I think we're actually ranked 50th now. Oh, gosh. And so, you know, when these teachers do it, it is a passion of love, man. I mean, they, they're definitely going, you know, to try to do that. and But – you know, we need teachers. We need, and they need to be. You know, they need to be good at what they do. So, I guess if if I had a choice well, between to having like someone who is passionate about it versus someone who wasn't, I'd rather have a passionate teacher. Absolutely. So, let me ask you this then: What are you passionate about? Oh, I mean, are gosh. you passionate about IT? Um, no. Or do you understand that this is a job that you can do and do well that allows you to, to pursue your other passions? Well, how about this? I, I yeah, I'm one of those types. I, I, I. I've long had to be the person of I'm passionate about this job just so I can follow other passions or pay for other yeah. passions that I do have. Um, so yeah, th- that's where I'm at. I mean, I, I would definitely not say that I'm in a job field where I go, Oh, every morning I'm so excited about getting there and doing something, yeah. but it pays the bills, man. That. It pays the bills and it pays, you know, pays what I need to pay for. So I guess that feeling of comfort kind of that passion comes from just knowing that I have a good job and, and I can take care of my responsibilities. Yeah. You know, and that's nice to know that you, at least, you know, the difference and you understand that you have to keep the lights on somehow and allows you to chase other passions, you know, 
like running a podcast with one of your closest that's friends. right that's right uh, i mean if, if i mean if, fact, if that if that was something that we could do full time like a radio show or do something full time i think i would get a kick out of it like i listen to radio on the way in to work and way home you and i could have fun just doing a radio show for 4 hours just talking about the topics of the day Oh, absolutely. I, you know, I, I feel very strongly that we could get – plus we could spend the other half of the day going out and getting advertising that pays our bills. Yeah. Well, which, and that's which, the thing which, is that, I mean, you have to be – you have to do so many things to be passionate about that because you got to you, – you know, we see the four hours on the radio, but you don't see all the hours of research and all the hours of them in meetings trying to figure out what to talk about the next, you know, next day and stuff. So, it, you know, it, everything's work. Everything is, is work. We see the culmination of the four hours, but there's more than that. Yeah, you never see what goes in, what goes on, on uh, you know, off the air to make sure those four hours are, are, are the quality in there. But I, that's something I would love to do. That's one of the passions, you know, I've developed over the last couple of years is every week recording a show, trying to figure out, you know, what we want to talk about and how it's going to work for us and hopefully find something that people really enjoy. Yeah, well, and, and, and I think we had that opportunity had I been in – if had I stayed in Kingman, I think we would have had that opportunity because it sounded like that one radio station was ready to – to have us kind of do a, yeah. a, a weekly, yeah. um, they want a I mean, daily, daily uh, podcast, well, not a podcast, but a radio show, but a radio show. And that, yeah. that's something our listeners don't, some of our listeners don't know is that we were actually offered a drive time radio uh, show here up in Kingman. Uh, but Jason had just moved to Phoenix yeah. and the, the, the sad, and Scott's defense, radio, he wouldn't cut me because the EP suggested, exactly, Hey, get it? cut the dead weight and get a real, uh, a real, uh, partner in crime. But you, held on to your ground and you lost out because of that. And I, I'm always thankful for yeah, that. Well, I, what I said the unfortunate part is they wanted drive time radio, but they couldn't afford to pay us. And we can't, we couldn't, uh, or they couldn't afford to pay us what we're making now to make it worth their Oh lot. gosh. No, I, I can't, I, I have to think that you have to be like a Howard Stern to make that kind of money. Well, well Howard Stern's making seven figures, you know, yeah, that's I'm true. making in the, that's in, true. In the um, you know, we're probably making in the high fives, low sixes for some people. So, that, that's probably pretty big for for a big size market, but we're not a major market. So, well, and it, I would think the reality for most people is that if it wasn't for the need for financial income, like if you if you could find a job where you didn't have to make the money, you you would not be doing what you do, right? I mean, you would be definitely doing something else. Yeah, I, I would. You know, I, I for as much as I enjoy what yeah. I do, because I do enjoy yeah. it. I think that, yeah, if, if money was an option, I would be doing other things. But I, I think everybody could say that. I, you, there are very few people in this world that would openly admit to keeping the job they're in if money wasn't a factor. You know? Yeah, like, like, I mean, how many people, if they won the lottery, would still work? You know what I mean? Like, they'd still work. Even Like, I've heard a lot of people say, oh, I'd still work. I wouldn't, like, necessarily quit my job. I think I would do something different. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, think I, I would I definitely would do chase, something different. I would go chase a dream. Yeah. At that point, I, w- I would go to culinary school because I could afford to and I could still afford to live. So something like that. Yeah. You know? Yeah. No, I'm with you. I'm with you. Well, I, you know, speaking of all that graduation, we talked a little bit about it before the show. But did you see the news story from that billionaire who did the commencement speech at Morehouse College? In his no. co- in his commencement speech, um, he offered a 40 million dollar grant to pay off all of the student loans for the 400 graduates of Morehouse College this year. Wow. Now Morehouse College is a um, he. I guess th- to give a, a precept, the the commencement speaker was a graduate of or alumni of Morehouse College from like twenty years earlier. He had been become very successful in business, and he actually runs like a multiple multi billion dollar uh, equity fund. Well, so he's and he's considered by Forbes to be the richest African American in the United States. So he and his family pledged $40 million to the graduating class to pay off all of their student loans for every graduate. And I guess when he was giving the speech, the students, they took like a picture of all the students and they were like mind blown, like had no idea that this guy was doing that. And his message was, hey, look, I've I've eliminated the financial burden it's now up to you to go after what you really want. You know what yeah. I mean? Just like we were talking about, yeah. like if we didn't have money, we'd go after something, what, you know, what they want. So it was almost like he was starting and leaving a legacy for these graduates to say, Hey, that is no longer a burden for you. Go after it, go get it, you know, do what you're passionate about. So. 
Well, you know, for, and for those that don't know, Morehouse College is it, it's a it's an African American private school in Atlanta. I, I think it's in Atlanta, and I think it's an all male school. I don't. I, I think yeah, it's, it's a male yeah. an all male uh, private school. I'm probably butchering yeah. it. It probably I, I might be making a mistake, but I think it's an all male private school. Um, well, and, and the commencement speaker was a graduate from the school like 20, 25 years earlier. So he, you know, became a powerful person. And, um, and so that's where he was coming from. You know, good for him, man. You know, I was lucky enough when I went to college, you know, my parents made an agreement with my brother and I, if we went to two years of community college, they'd pay for two years of, of a state school. And back when I went to school, back in my day, you know, you know, in 2001 and 2002, when I was at the university, uh, 13 plus credit hours was only about 1300 bucks uh, at Arizona State. Yeah. And now it's running six or 7,000. Yeah. No, uh, I, I looked at Arizona State and in state tuition, if you count just the, the tuition, is really, is really inexpensive compared to housing. That's where you get oh, gouged, yeah. man. They, they get well, you. My assistant, my, yeah, my assistant's daughter is 12 years old, and she's starting to look at schools just because, you know, kids want to start dreaming, and she wants to figure out what she wants to be when she grows up. Yeah. And her dad uh, was talking to her about it and said, well, look at schools. And she decided uh, she wanted to go to GCU when she's old enough, Grand Canyon University. Oh, she's so okay. One after, yeah, exactly. That's a private school in Arizona, for those that don't know. It's not a state school. It's a private Christian school. So I got bored, so I started looking up tuitions uh, for the three state schools in GCU. And it runs about a state school on average between uh, Northern Arizona University in Flagstaff, University of Arizona in Tucson, and Arizona State in Tempe. It's about $25,000 a year to $28,000 a year for tuition, uh, room and board, books, uh, and incidental. So, you know, basically, we'll, we'll call it twenty eight grand a year to be safe to, to go to college, living on campus. Private school, it's about another six to $7,000 to go to GCU. Jeez. Wow. So, yeah, and that, that, that's that's insanely, that's huge. That's a huge difference. That's, that's expensive, man. Back in my day, you know, you know, back in our day, it was it was it was still expensive, but it was probably a fraction. Yeah. Of that. Yeah. Well, I know it was a fraction of that. So I, I, I commend anybody that has that kind of resource uh, to pay off the student loans of 400 graduates at a private school, because, you know, that's not going to be cheap. Yeah. You know, I wish that, that there was more people out there that have graduated and been successful that can go back and, and pay off uh, 400 new graduates, uh, private loan or student loans. Cause that's, that makes a difference. That allows you to chase a passion that allows you to take a huge weight off your shoulders and not feel like, you know, the private debt collectors that the, the government has farmed out for student loans is chasing you anymore. You know? Yeah. You know, the, like, I think about like uh, Mark Zuckerberg, Bill Gates, they never even graduated from college. They started out at Harvard, yeah. but then they left. So, they, you know what I mean? Like, they wouldn't be able to say, I'm an alumni, so now I'm going to help out other alumni because they never graduated. They didn't have to. Yeah. Right? But, you know, it's, it's, like, I look at so many athletes that go back and, and get a degree just to, just to say they finished. I mean, there was Jalen Smith of the Dallas Cowboys, went back to Notre Dame and got his degree finally. And I think it's cool that, you know, some players are, are more than just athletes. They're guys that know that there's life after sports and you have to be prepared. You have to be ready to do whatever it takes to survive in the working world. Have you ever been? I um, mean, yeah, um, now I, if I put you on the spot and you you wish not to answer, that's fine. Are you in a good alumni to ASU? I mean, do you like donate to them and do stuff for them? No, yeah. I don't either. I haven't donated to Seattle U in well almost my entire existence. And, I buy a shirt every once in a while and a hat for yeah when they and come play a, yeah, GCU, and, and, you know. Yeah, and I'll I'll buy the hats. I'll wrap them. Don't get me wrong. You know, I've got an Arizona State tattoo on my arm. That's but, true. Yeah, I'm, I'm not. I'm not an alumni that's gonna that's gonna give money every year. No, you're a state school. You have the biggest population. Actually, it's the biggest school in the country now. Uh, you have enough students going to your camp classes, paying in state and out of state state tuition. You don't need my money. You don't need my hundred bucks a year, or whatever I donate to make myself feel yeah. better. It's not worth it. I understand. You know. I understand. And, you know, some people might argue that I paid the big tuition to go to your school. That should be enough. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. But in some cases, I've learned that you don't even have to go to that school to join the Alumni Association. So really, it's all a moot point. If you want, if you're willing to pay the dues, uh, just ask to join and you can join. 
Well, and I, I will say this. I mean, in the graduation ceremony that it came up, even Noreen had commented. She goes, it's, it's kind of, I mean, I didn't go to college, but it's kind of impressive. It, there's something about a graduation where you're seeing students go through that process of getting, you know, the struggles and taking those classes and doing those things. And she, you know, she has never needed a college degree because she's very good at what she does. That being said, she was kind of in, oh, man, this is kind of a big deal. Oh, yeah. You know, I miss college, man. I, I wish I could go back and do it all over again. Just this time, if I knew what I know now and have the money I have now, just do it completely different, you know? What, would you change your degree? Would you get something else? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. I, I would get something. Uh, Arizona State had a, had a program called the BIS, which is the Bachelor's of Interdisciplinary Studies, where it's basically you could take half a degree, like from marketing and half a degree from communications or business or what have you. And, Got it. And and take those core classes and make one degree out of it. So it makes you more versatile. Yeah. You know, the degree I have for what I do works. Yeah. It's essentially sales and how to how to how to deal with people. Yeah. Uh, which, which works a whole lot better in this world since everyone's so focused on their phone and the internet. It's it's a very unique tool to be able to talk to someone one on one and keep your cool. You know. Yeah, I, I know I would have changed my – I don't know if I would have changed my degree per se, but one thing that I would have done a lot differently is I would have tried to get more involved with the university at that time because how many of the contacts yeah. and the connections with, you know, with other companies and other entities I could have tapped into – um, to help me after I graduated. I, I, I think I would have done that differently. Like I would have been more yeah. involved with some of the business fraternities and some of the organizations that were in the college that I just didn't, I couldn't participate in. I just, I mean, I worked, you know, 60 hours a week, my senior year, just to, you know, make ends meet. So it, it, I just didn't have an opportunity, but I would definitely have done that differently. Yeah. I'm right. I'm kind of right there with you. I had 18 credit hours and two jobs the entire way through. So I didn't have time to really go out and, enjoy what college had to offer but yeah i would like to have done a lot of the same things just go out there and and really try to to meet more people and do more college things with those guys spend more time and do the fun things on campus well and i firmly believe that some of like some of the kids i went to college with they use their relationship with the college and those activities to get the internships with big companies or, you know, get a, um, get a, a, a partnership with a law firm so that they could work there for three months as they prepare themselves. You know what I mean? Like those kind of connections, I just, I didn't take advantage of. And I, I think I would have done that. Well, ideally it's all about leverage and it's who, you know, and it took me a long time to figure that out. And, and it's, it's nurturing those connections and not just using them when they're comfortable for you to use or convenient for you to ask, but to, to reach out and just say, Hey, and have those just actually build a genuine relationship with. Them, yeah. You know? Yeah. No, I mean, who knows? I mean, it, it's always hard to tell, but that was one thing that I took from these four exceptional students. I mean, you could tell that these kids ingratiated themselves into the upper levels of the college to get those connections to get those special jobs or to get those special internships. Yeah. You could tell that they, they use those things um, with UNLV to get things, uh, get opportunities that may not be, have been available to just students who are just going to school there. And that was it. So. Yeah. Yeah. I feel that. So I want our listeners to, to, to tell us on social media, uh, if you could go back to college, what would you get for a degree or would you keep the same degree? Or if you can even go to a different school, let us know. Hit us up on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter, all at Liquid Carnage. We want to know. Yeah. You know, what was your experience like? Just talk to us about it. Yeah. And, and whether you'd even go. Like, because some people, you know, have done very well and didn't go. So would you go? Yeah. If you had hindsight to go 2020, would you go? Given the opportunity. Yeah. Or if you went and you realized you didn't really need to go, would you not? Would you <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly. Would you join the military? Would you just go get a job and start working and say, fuck it? <laughs> Exactly. That's what we want to know. <laughs> so as we come to a close today, we want everyone to go out there, have a very safe, happy uh, Memorial Day weekend. Uh, try, I'd say try to stay cool, but it sounds like it's going to be cool through the entire state the entire weekend. Uh, so stay warm. Is that okay to say for Memorial Day? I, you're going to have to because it's we don't. I don't think we get above 85 this whole week. So that's perfect dog fence building weather for you. I, I think uh, so. I have found a six-pound brisket. I am going to sous and smoke, and make a Texas Twinkie and and, uh, 
and uh, barbecue tacos with. So I'm pretty excited about that. Yes, boy. Look at you, buddy. Go for it. Uh, that's what I'm saying, man. If I could go back and do it again, I'd probably go to the culinary route. I love it, man. I love it. Yeah. You'd be passionate about yeah. it, baby. You'd be passionate. I, I think so. I think you just so. have to call your. Once would you more... call your restaurant Liquid Carnage, though? Um, I, I would. I would not actually, and I will tell you, <laughs> I've actually. Wow. I don't want to name my restaurant. I don't want to name my restaurant after my podcast, unless you're a partner in it. Then I feel like I have to. Um, okay. Well, uh, I will. I will tell you right now. I, I have been working on something on the side, uh, another side venture. Since I am very passionate about cooking, as most people that follow me on social media know that I only post about my dogs, memes, or food that I, I want to try or that I've been working on. And I've decided that uh, I'm, I'm going to on the low, uh, on the down low, start working on my own little private catering side hustle. And I'm going to call it the salty walrus. Oh, <laughs> nice. Uh, nice. The, the salty walrus uh, toppest kitchen is, is what I'm working on. And that way, if it ever takes off, I can, I can have the salty walrus toppest room and the drunk walrus bar right next to it. Oh, I love it. I love it. So yeah, so yeah, that's what I would do with it. So All yeah, right. there we go, there we go. Yeah, so we're taking the maiden voyage this weekend. I've got some ideas. I'm going to try them on our friends and see what happens. Yeah, okay, sounds good, man. Yeah. So why don't you go and take us home, Jason? All right, hey everyone, thanks for listening. Have a great Memorial Day. Uh, that was Scott. I am Jason, and as always, if you never know quite what to say, just have yourself some liquid carnage.